Hello and welcome to a new tutorial and in this tutorial I am going to be showing you my workflow and my preferred method for creating natural environments like these that you see. My rune, my beach, my desert war environment, this nether rune and this is the result of the tutorial we're going to be making today. It's a castle scene. Um, so what I first like doing is blocking out the shapes. So, how I block out the shapes is pretty simple. I usually start with just normal looking cubes. I use a sky texture because I usually think that the sky texture gives me very very good lighting. I start making the lighting look good and then I experiment with different compositions. These are some of my work in progress renders of this project. You see, I fiddled around a lot with the composition and the lighting. Once I finished and I finally got my final look that I wanted with the composition, I started changing the assets to some more detailed assets. So, this is the part of the tutorial where I'm going to be telling you to use assets. Now, some people think that using assets is wrong and I think that's very, that that's not a good way of thinking because well, yes, making your own assets is going to help you, and I do that sometimes. I, like, when I'm trying to make a, some sort of cave or something, I'm not going to be able to make it using mega scans. I'm going to need to sculpt the rocks myself, and I can do that, and I did that for some of my scenes. Such as this one, where I sculpted the rock in the ground, like, with, like, actual sculpt brushes. I used the clay strip brush and the drawing brush for like most of the process and used them as free rock brushes. But this scene is perfect to use some mega scans because it isn't too complex that you need to make your own sculpts. So to change the block out I usually put all the block out cubes into a new collection. I'm gonna call that collection block out. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to import in some Megascans cliff assets. I usually use the Nordic cliff assets, and then I position them where the cubes were. I unhide and hide the block out to see if it's matching very well. Once I'm done with that, I add in more assets and select them all together and put them into the ground collection or the base, depends on the type of landscapes you're working on. I'm going to call this one base collection. Once I'm done with that, I wanted um, to have some pretty simple blockouts for the castle tower. So I added another cylinder and put that in the blockout collection so I can have a clear idea going in what this um, blockout will look like in the composition. So after that, I'm going to go into modeling the castle tower. It's pretty easy, it's just cylinders, you know how to model that, it's just cylinders with some deleted faces and some little bit of sculpting involved and texturing. It was pretty easy honestly. I just used a brick texture that I found from textures.com in this uh, thing. I did not use this placement because I thought it was far away enough that I could get away with using normal maps. So that looked pretty good, and I positioned that in where the blockout was. I really think organizing these collections are very useful, because for example, if I want to only look at the ground, I can hide every other collection. If you do not organize these collections, you're going to end up with a mess, especially in nature scenes, where you have so much nature assets that you have to scatter across the ground. Once I have organized my scene, it's time to move on and start scattering nature assets. This is where I recommend using paid assets, because paid assets are very so much better than free assets in this category. So if you search free grass or plant 3D model on CG Trader or Turbo Squid, you're not going to get very impressive results because obviously it's free. But in Blender Market, there's very great add-ons for nature scenes such as Scatter, Botanique, Grasswold, and Treescapes, um, Junglescapes, and so many other add-ons. They're just amazing for creating 
nature scenes. Um, and it's really worth the price because it's very hard to find good looking paid models in, you know, CG Trader, Turbo Squid, Sketchfab, that sort of place. So, for the lighting, I switched from the sky texture, which I usually use most of the times, to a HDRI because I wanted the cloud background for this scene. I'm going to import in some nice mega scans, uh, mega scans grass and bush assets, which looks pretty good. And I'm going to organize them again. I imported more assets, this time some flower assets, and did the same process, weight painting and stuff. And during weight painting, it's important for you to realize that you shouldn't just paint anywhere. During weight painting, you need to know exactly what you're trying to achieve. Here, I wanted the grass to just be on top of the cliff, the rock thing. So I painted that on top and put that as my uh, density weight thing. It, it worked pretty well. And I used children for most of my grass. So I did the same with um, the bushes, the roots, and the sticks, and the rocks, the pebbles, and everything. And once I'm done with that, I had to make the trees. The trees are very, very essential for this scene because without the trees, it will look just horrendous. So, to make the trees, follow the tutorial from this person that taught me how to create trees with this method. It was pretty good. Once you're done with So, we just need to add new here, click advanced, set it to random, set the distribution to random. Uh, rotation, make sure randomize phase is at 2 so it's not all uniform. And then set the render collection to the tree collection. And after you set it to tree collection, make sure you um, enable children because children will just help a lot with the RAM. And when you enable children, make sure to bring down the count. And we're going to add vertex group. This mesh doesn't have a vertex group, so let's just quickly add a vertex group and do the weight painting and go back, add the vertex group and add the new texture and this is where you're going to give the randomization. Um, go to settings, go to clouds for the texture settings. I like to bring the scale a little up, around 1 to 2 will work nice. Enable color ramp with the colors tab and just crush the black and white so you get some random variation. This is how I set up all my particle systems for every single nature scene. This I did with my rock, pebbles, stone, uh, flower, um, ferns, moss, basically every nature in this entire scene. Alright, once you've done every single step, that means block out and change the block out to detailed assets. Model your own assets if you have to, set up the particle system, set up the lighting. You're basically finished with all the things that you have to do in Blender. Only things left is compositing. We are going to do some of the compositing in Blender's built-in compositor and others in any image editor. You can use anything. You can use GIMP. GIMP is free. It's an uh, alternative to Photoshop, or you can use Photoshop, or actually, since we're only taking color, you, you can also just use, to be honest, just Instagram. <laughs> you can you can do all this stuff in Instagram if you want to. Um, yeah, you're basically uh, finished. I did my post-processing in Pixlr, which is a free web sort of thing. It's not very good, but it's usable. I just up the vibrant, saturation, contrast, and brightness, and I just sharpened it, and I tinted it a little yellow, and I cropped it. That's basically it. Yeah, that's um, everything I have for this video. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be releasing another video pretty soon. Around this week, I'm going to be releasing a new video called 5 Tips, or 3, I don't know, it's either 3 or 5, but I think it's going to be 5 Tips for um, Blender. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching.